إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدًا عبده ورسوله فصلوات الله وسلامه عليه وعلى آله ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما كثيرا ونساء وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كلام الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة عباد الله My respected brothers and sisters in Islam In preparations for examinations We put an effort We put a lot of effort Sometimes at night Sleepless nights And sometimes we even sacrifice Most of our beloved things in preparation to pass this exam. Ikhwati fi Allah. We have the Muslim of Ibadah coming in the next two weeks. We have the month which is the pillar amongst the pillars of Islam. Ikhwani fi Allah. If we don't prepare for this exam, we will tend to come out a failure. We will come out without gaining anything from the purpose of this month or the purpose of this pillar which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in Surah Al-Baqarah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, He speaks to you in the khitab which is the most beloved to the believers, Al-Iman. If someone calls you Muslim, or oh, mu'min, this person is a true mu'min, you become happy. If they call you a kafir or munafiq, you will fight for this. You will fight this individual. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu. He calls you with iman. He says, ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu. And when you hear ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, it is khayrun tu'maru bih. You will be Allah is calling you to, to do good things. Or sharrun, or he is preventing you from committing an evil. So he says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena aman. And then he says to you, Ikhwani fillah, listen to the khitab. Which is the khitab? The etiquette of tarbiyah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kutiba alaykum usiyam. He uses the fi'il kutiba. Is this in Arabic language is called Al-Fi'l Alladhi Lam Yusamma Fa'iluhu The doer of the actions is not mentioned. He says, Kutiba, it has been obligated upon you. It's been written an obligation, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sometimes you when you do tadabbur in the Quran, you tend to ask, why did Allah use this? Why did Allah say Kutiba instead of Katab Allah? Allah has written upon you. He didn't say that. He says, it's been made obligations upon you to fast. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the etiquette of the Quran, you tend to find ikhwani fillah, if something is disliked, Allah does not mention. Or the nafs, your soul dislikes this. It doesn't want to do this. It's hard upon the soul. Allah does not mention himself. But you know that al-shari, the one who's doing the shara, the one who's making the obligation, you know, is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Kutiba, he says. Kutiba alaykum as-siyam. Just like he says in, in the next few pages, 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kutiba alaykumul qital. He says, jihad has been made obligatory upon you. He does not mention Allah has made katab Allahu. It does not say. He says, kutiba. Lam yusamma fa'ilu. But when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions something that is praiseworthy, something that is easy for you to accept, He says, katab Allahu la aghliban. Katab Allahu. Allah has written, those things are the etiquette Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning he says kutiba is being made obligatory upon you and then he also wants to make this easy for you to understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says Kama kutiba ala min qablikum. he says just like we made obligations upon the previous nations Meaning, why is Allah comparing? He's using the calf for comparative. Kama kutiba ala ladina min qablikum. Allah is using tashbih, comparison in this ayah. Why is that? Sometimes if you, something has been made obligation, you tell one of your child, go and clean the plate, go and do this. He's going to say what? Why me? Why are you bicking on me? This is hard upon that individual. It's already the act is hard. And now the person feels injustice. That action is not fair. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he makes this easy for you. He says, Kama kutiba ala ladina min qablikum. It's been made obligatory upon the people before you. And they accepted it. They have stood for this. And you know the fasting in the beginning, Allah mentioned this etiquette. And then the fasting, it was, those who were not able in the beginning of Islam, they weren't unable to fast, they were given options of giving fidya. And then also those who are even more difficult for them, you are on a journey or a, or a sick person, that also do it later on. Don't worry about this. This is a tarbiyah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. An etiquette in the way he is dealing with us in the Quran. But we need to understand this, ikhwani fi Allah. We need to understand the concept, tadabbur of the Quran. We need to understand Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not mean to punish us. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the, towards the end, he says, يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ بِكُمُ الْيُسْرُ Allah wants an ease for you. And Allah does not want hardship upon you. Allah mentioned, He said, So that you glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that you might be grateful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after He used this comparison and comparative in this best form of teaching and guidance, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the purpose. He mentions the purpose behind the fasting, ikhwani fi Allah. He says, why? لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ So that you might gain God consciousness. A taqwa. Ikhwani fi Allah. This is the commandment from the fasting. That you might become God conscious. What does that mean? That you might actually stick to the commandment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon the way of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and you turn away from the haram and the, the things that Allah has forbidden upon also the similar way in the manners of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has stayed, stayed away from. Ikhwani fi Allah Even though fasting is obligation Ikhwani fi Allah There are wasail that we need to take. We need to take means of gaining this taqwa. And it starts way before Ramadan comes. Istidad. If there's a guest coming and your house is, is in a shambolic state, in a bad state, that guest will not benefit from the house, neither will you benefit from the, from the guest coming. You only create harm for the guest and you will create harm for yourself. We need to mentally and physically and spiritually prepare for this month, for this great guest. Ikhwani fillah, there's a qaida which is 
in the qawaid al fiqiyah is known as al wasail laha ahkam al maqasid al wasail the end goals the end goals the ruling of the end goals also is taken by the means of taking uh, to that goal meaning if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made an obligation upon you certain thing for you fulfilling that commandment any way to fulfill that commandment becomes a wajib for example for you man here let's to be in the masjid for Jum'ah is an obligation is a wajib therefore coming to the masjid becomes by any means you take a bus a taxi or you walk to the masjid becomes obligation even though the walking or the bus is not itself an obligation everything that leads you to the masjid in preparation for the Jum'ah becomes a wajib as well likewise anything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forbidden from you that is haram any means to get to the haram becomes haram zina is haram for you to be isolated with the opposite gender in a room becomes haram for you to walk to a place where you know haram is easy becomes haram to assist someone to commit an haram becomes a haram even though you might say i did not do the fi'l i did not do for you to take this person from this end to another end knowing the fact that is this person is going to commit a haram if it becomes that fi'l that you have done that action that you have done becomes a haram al wasail laha ahkam al maqasid the ruling of the angles is taken by the wasail the means of getting getting to that goal Therefore, Ramadan is coming. For you to gain the taqwa, for you to gain the taqwa in preparation for that becomes an obligation. If Ramadan comes and you do not benefit, and you do not gain the taqwa which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded you because you had other obligatory things that you have, might be doing, those obligatory, those that distract you from the obligation becomes a haram you are becoming sinful if it means that your Ramadan is going to be affected. We need to prepare for this a great month. Subhanakallahum bihamdik shadun la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين إخواني في الله like I said the wasail the means of gaining taqwa there are many ways of gaining taqwa but I'm going to mention few things that you need to do in preparation to achieve this taqwa or to achieve the most out of Ramadan number one it is a wajib upon a believer to know the wajibat. It becomes a compulsory. When you say, when you read the hadith, طلب العلم فريضة على كل مسلم to seek a knowledge, it becomes a faridah upon every Muslim. This means the wajibat. These are the necessary things that you need to do in order to be a Muslim. Meaning the five pillars. If you do not know how they work, if you do not know what nullify, what nullify you deen, you shahada, you do not know what nullify you salah, you do not know what invalidate the fasting, you are automatically, and you're not seeking for it. If you are not seeking, because the knowledge is fast. If a person is negligent, in regards to seeking knowledge with regards with, with the wajibaj, the obligation, the minimum requirement to be a Muslim, which is the five pillars of Islam, then you are become automatically sinful. It becomes an obligation, ikhwani fillah, for a person to know the wajibat in his deen. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the hadith al-Qudsi says وَمَا تَقَرَّبَ إِلَيَّ عَبْدِي بِشَيْءٍ أَحَبُّ إِلَيَّ مِمَّا افْتَرَدْتُهُ عَلَيْهِ And my servant does not come closer to me or draw nearer to me with anything more beloved to the things that I have made obligation upon. So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made an obligation upon you to pray and to fast, you, know, you need to know what nullify and what improve those ibadat which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded. Most of us, we pray five daily prayers, alhamdulillah. But then when you reach the age of 60 and then you realize you have not studied any kitab amongst the kutub of the ulama and then you sit in a halaqa and then you realize that you say Allah my Allah forgive me for the past 60 years I've been doing it wrong you haven't studied in muhtasarat the summary of those books with, re with regards to your ibadah the basic ibadah five daily prayer because the, many people make the same small mistakes which makes the person's salah invalid zakah also most a lot of people I know they have land back home in their country and they intend to sell they don't intend to move back to that country they make the intentions of selling when the price is right according to them but you know when an item is for sale especially for a land every year goes past you have to pay a zakah for it when you sell it if you sell it within the same year it's fine but every year that item is for sale the dakakin here that we have in the shops you do calculation of what you have and then you make a zakah from what you had at that particular time every ramadan we pay zakah some of us you calculate what you have and also if you're taking rent from houses that you own if that rent is saved at the end of the year Islamic year not January February in the, at the end of the Islamic year from the moment that you start saving those money and it reach the nisab you start paying zakah for it most of us do not know we intend to sell the same things regardless and then we just say okay no zakah because the person does not know it does not mean ikhwan fillah that the zakah you don't need to pay because you've done this a long time ago that's the right of the people it's not the right of Allah zakah is the right of the poor and the orphans and those in need whenever you remember and you start learning about zakah then you have to pay back in due whatever years that you have not paid likewise al-hajj most of you alhamdulillah if you have the capability to do hajj you have the money to do the Hajj and you are capable of traveling to the Hajj that particular year it becomes a, just like a Salah that the, the waqt, the time has entered it becomes a wajib upon you to do the Hajj if you have the istida'a, man istida'a meaning that you have the money and you are healthy enough to do Hajj then it becomes a compulsion for you to learn to go to Hajj even if you start losing all that money, you, your health deteriorate. There was a point when Hajj became wajib upon you, then you start going, you have to, someone has to do Hajj on your behalf, whether it's the family or you take it on your shoulder in the Akhirah. One of the other things that you need to gain to wasail, wasail of taqwa, is that you need to muhasabatun nafs. You Deal with yourself daily in order to become a good, mindful of God, mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You need to do muhasaba. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says to you and me, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, O you who believe, ittaqullaha, be mindful of Allah. Wal tanzur nafsum ma qaddamat ligad. And let one of you, each one of you look into what he is sending forth. In the Akhirah, what are you sending it forth for tomorrow? Look into it. 
This means muhasabatun. Every evening when you go to your bed, you remember the things that you've done wrong and right. You calculate. You do tawbah from the sins. And you try to improve tomorrow better. The other thing that you need to do in order to, to gain taqwa, ikhwani fi Allah, is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, وَالَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا فِيْنَا لَنَهْدِيَنَّهُمْ سُبْلَنَا وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَمْ عَلْمُسُمْ This is also struggle for the, for the sake of Allah. Jihadu nafs Jihadu nafs means you struggle for to improve yourself daily. That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He promised you. وَالَّذِينَ those جَاهَدُوا فِيْنَا He says, those who struggle towards us لَنَهْدِيَنَّهُمْ Allah will guide you to his way. And Allah is with the Al Muhsinin, the good doers. And also finally, Ikhwani Fillah. To be to be a mindful of Allah and to gain taqwa is this we need, you need to go back to the book. Basics. Qiraatul Quran. Understand the Quran. Ikhwani Fillah is now easy to learn the deen. We have the wasail we have the social media we have the social media we have many ways of learning the deen we have ulama available at the tip of your fingers recently I came across this Quran program which is Jam'iyatul Maknoon I think has put forth for the Muslimin it's free it's called Al-Quran Al-Quran Mubashir 24 hours, 365 days, seven days a week, we have ulama online teaching Quran. All you have to do is sign up to the program and then read to them, take lessons from them, and it's free. Teach Quran for the sake of Allah. They're not taking anything. It's available for adults. Is available for kids, for females, segregations. Those programs are available. And yet, and yet, we say we don't have a time. You can go online anytime before you go to bed, when you wake up in the morning, and then find a teacher that listens to your Quran, correct you, teach you. And yet, we do not take the opportunities. You can make, if you want, preference. Meet your local imam and arrange time if possible to do certain classes. There's no excuse. There's other classes available which is also maybe that you can sign up to a course online. There's no excuse for a person to be an ignorant, especially when it comes to the basics of his deen. Those ulums are wajib, especially with the Quran. Every book that you study, whether it's Arabic, whether it's fiqh, it all comes back to explaining the Qur'an. What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from you. So we need to go back to the basics. In this month, you should not be a person who is unable to read the Qur'an. You should not be a person who needs transliteration to read the Qur'an. It takes for an adult to learn the Qur'an, how to read the Qur'an, it takes 13 lessons. If you, compile, if you compile all the qawaid al-Arabiyya in terms of reading, 13 lessons to 18 lessons maximum. And yet we have people who struggle to read the Quran yet. Those are unacceptable. I think the person is not making an effort. Unless the person has got excuse, maybe an illness. But there are books which is easy to understand. Easy to understand how to read. The concept is quite easy. If you can find a child that is five years old and half is Al-Quran and six years of, of age, therefore an adult can do the same as well. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the tawfiq to understand the deen. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make this Ramadan a fruitful Ramadan. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala balighna Ramadan. We ask Allah, Allahumma balighna shahr Ramadan. Allahumma balighna shahr Ramadan. Allahumma gfir lana wa liwalidayna. Wa liwalidi walidayna. Wa liman lahu haqqun alayna. 
اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين وأذل الشرك والمشركين ودمر أعداءك أعداء الدين يا رب العالمين إخواني في الله من يبرادس ركوست الدعاء especially one of the مصلين his mother is terminally ill in the hospital so we ask Allah سبحانه وتعالى to give her شفاء عاجلا كاملا Allah سبحانه وتعالى to make everyone who's sick their sin expiation for their sins اللهم يا الله اللهم اشفي أنت الشافي لا شفاء إلا شفاءك وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين قوموا إلى السلام ورحمة الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله هيا على الصلاة هيا على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله واعتدلوا تراصوا وصدوا الخلل سووا صفوفكم الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا سبح اسم ربك الأعلى الذي خلق فسوى والذي قدر فهدى والذي أخرج المرعى فجعله غثاء أحوى سنقرئك فلا تنسى إلا ما شاء الله إنه يعلم الجهر وما يخفى ونيسرك لليسرى فذكر إن نفعت الذكرى سيذكر من يخشى ويتجنبها الأشقى الذي يصل النار الكبرى ثم لا يموت فيها ولا يحيا قد أفلح من تزكى وذكر اسم ربه فصلى بل تؤثرون الحياة الدنيا والآخرة خير وأبقى إن هذا لفي الصحف الأولى صحف إبراهيم وموسى الله سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر 
الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين قل أعوذ برب الفلق من شر ما خلق ومن شر غاسق إذا وقب ومن شر النفاثات في العقد ومن شر حاسد إذا حسد الله سمع الله لمن حمده ربنا ولك الحمد والسماء الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله